Ruchem Aboyim. Again, welcome everyone to our home. Thank you for attending. Um, so again, we're in the middle of the um, tabernacle. And um, again, something very important in our history and in our lineage. So this week on my thoughts, I'd like to continue our virtual tour of the, uh, with the furnishing that were made for the tabernacle. I would like to examine the last piece of furniture that was placed in the holy of the tabernacle, of the Mishkan, uh, the Mizbeach Hazav, meaning the golden altar. It was the place where the daily incense was offered. The question that we have to ask is, why was it that the Torah waited to introduce the golden offer, the Mizbeach Hazav, after all the other furniture in the Mishkan? Even the clothes of the Kohanim preceded it. So the shock stated that we have a precept in the Torah called Acharon, Acharon Chaviv, that the best is kept for last. So the fact that the golden altar was mentioned last is really an indication that it was actually the most important of all the items that were fashioned for the Mishkan, not the least. There's another reason as to why the golden altar is not mentioned in its proper place. The Torah tells us concerning the Mizbeach HaNechoshet, the sacrificial cop, cop, copper altar uh, that was in the courtyard of the Mishkan, that if it was moved, or if one of the stones fell out, or, or even if one of the polished stones developed a nick, it would invalidate any sacrifice that was brought upon it. However, since the Torah introduced a golden altar out of place, it indicated that even if the altar was damaged in any way, it could still be used. In fact, even without the use of the altar, the incense could still have been, could still have been offered in the Mishkan. You know, the Meshi Luach, based on the Talmud in Yuma, stated that the Kohen who offered the Kantoris would be blessed with riches. This was the only ritual performed by the Kohanim, by the priest, where a Kohen was permitted to offer it one time, one time and never again. This is another reason as to why the golden altar is introduced after all the other furnishings in the Mishkan, to include, as I mentioned, the clothing worn by the Kohanim. Our sages tell us that each garment worn by a Kohen, especially the Kohen Gadol, the high priest, was an atonement for some negative trait that the people possessed. It was only after all of these safeguards were in place that the blessing for wealth could then be given. According to the Ramban, according to Nachmanides, the command to build the Mishkan was given to Moshe before the sin of the golden calf. However, Moshe did not inform the nation about its construction until after they sinned with the calf. Our sages tell us that the Ketoret, the incense, was offered primarily as an atonement for the sins of the soul. The Talmud, the Gemara, and Brachos asked which one of our five senses does the soul derive the most pleasure from? The Talmud answers, the sense of smell. This was the only one of our five senses that Adam, first man, did not defile when he ate from the Eitz Hadat, from the tree of knowledge. Based on this fact, the sense of smell well, is the only one of our senses that is still pristine and on a spiritual plane is able to correct that sin. I find it interesting that of the four senses in the head, three of them have the capability to both open and or close by themselves. Our sages tell us that God created us in, in a way, in this way, as a means of protection. Our eyelids allow us the ability to close our eyes, which are known as the windows of the soul, in order to shield us from looking at things that are improper. Our mouth was created with two gates, our lips and our teeth, two gates, one soft and the other hard, to help protect us from saying anything improper. Our sages tell us that our earlobes were created to allow us to close our ears rather than listen to improper speech. However, our nose, well, our nose is the only sense that has no guards. It cannot close by itself. If one wants to close their nose, it can only be done by some outside force such as your fingers, it is, the only, is the one sense that only gives and does not take. It is also the one sense that does not sin. Our noses function in three ways. The nose is used in breathing, a necessity of life. It is the main gate to the respiratory system. 
It also functions as an organ of, of, to eliminate waste. Again, a necessity for life. In addition, it is also used to smell, a joy that is experienced by the whole body. Most people, when they think of taste, think of the tongue. The truth is that without the sense of smell, you could eat, but without the some assistance from the nose, you couldn't taste anything. Our nose is shaped like an upside down Hebrew letter shin. This letter is embossed on our head to fill in. In the Atbash, a Kabbalistic way of counting, where we exchange the first letter in the Hebrew alphabet with the last letter in the Hebrew alphabet, Aleph and Toph. That's why it's Atbash. The numerical value of the gematria of God's ineffable name, what we refer to as the Yudke Vavke, is 26. When we exchange the letters, the numerical value was then 300. The gematria, the numerical value of the Hebrew letter, Shin. As we read in the Torah in connection with the creation of first man, holiness enters through the nostrils. When God first created man, the verse in Genesis states that the Yipach Be'apav Nishmas Chayim, that God Almighty breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. God breathed into Adam's nose, his nose, not his mouth, since the sense of smell was the only sense that Adam did not take when he sinned with the tree of knowledge. As it states in the book of Genesis that Adam listened to Hava, his wife, the sense of hearing. He took the fruit from her hand, the sense of touch. He saw that the fruit looked good to eat, the sense of sight. He ate from the fruit, the sense of taste. However, nowhere, nowhere does the Torah state that he smelled the fruit. Ergo, the sense of smell still remain pristine. Even the command to wear our head to fill in states that they should be letotofot bene necho, for a reminder between your eyes. What exists between your eyes? Your nose. However, it would not have been practical to place a box between your eyes. So we place the box of our head to fill in on our forehead, and then we line it up with our noses, <clears throat> the most pristine organ in the head. Interestingly enough, the nose is connected with both life and death. Did you ever wonder why, what is the reason that we offer a blessing to a person when they sneeze? There was a myth that when a person sneezes, it causes their heart to stop. Well, that is not medically true. It would seem that up until the time of Yaakov Avinu, Jacob our father, death occurred when a person would sneeze. People did not die from sickness. A person would sneeze and, so to speak, they would return to God Almighty the breath of life that he gave mankind when he created Adam. A sneeze actually travels at a speed of 100 miles an hour. Yaakov, our father, was the first person in history to experience sickness and then death. He asked God Almighty for a deathbed experience so as to give a person the opportunity to put their affairs in order and to hopefully to do tshuva, to repent, at least a chance to ask God for forgiveness before they died. So at the time when Moshe was originally told about the Mishkan, there was no need for the Ketorahs to be offered on the golden altar. Our sages tell us that at the giving of the Torah on Mount Sinai, God Almighty forgave all of the people's sins. In fact, God even forgave the sin of Adam, the first man from, for eating from the tree of knowledge and immortality was once again returned to the world. The Kli Chemda stated that before the sin of the golden calf, there was actually no necessity for a golden altar. The incense could have been brought anywhere in the Mishkan. However, after the sin of the golden calf, then it became a necessity to bring the incense in a designated place in the Hechel, a place holier than the courtyard of the Mishkan. Its purpose was to teach us about the oneness of God Almighty. The tour stated that the Ketorah was seen as an expression of to God Almighty, pardon me, an expression of appreciation to God Almighty for allowing us to house the Shekhinah, the divinity of God here on earth. You know, saying thank you is what Judaism is really all about. Saying thank you to God and also saying thank you to man. In fact, the name Jew is connected to the Hebrew word Hodah, meaning thank you. It is a custom among some Sephardic Jews 
to recite the portion from the Torah that describes the Ketorah as part of their Havdalah service each week after the Shabbat. I personally saw a Sephardic Jew who would always carry a piece of parchment in his pocket with the words of the Ketorah written on it. Now the function of the Mishkan was to serve as a dwelling place for the Shekhinah to reside amongst his beloved children. However, this close proximity, well, was not without its challenges. It created the possibility of dishonoring God's presence, much like we read concerning the two illustrious sons of Aaron, the high priest, Nadav and Abihu, who both died when they entered the Holy of Holies without an invitation from God. The unauthorized incense offering that they both brought with them also contributed to their deaths. The golden altar in its service had the power to quell any divine anger that might occur. This then is another reason as to why the section connected with the golden altar was introduced at the conclusion of the entire description of the Mishkan and its vessels. The Tanthuma stated that God said that out of the sacrifices that you offer me, there is nothing, nothing that I cherish as much as the incense offering. The incense was not brought to atone for a sin or an iniquity. It was brought primarily to bring joy to God Almighty, our Father in Heaven. But Midrash Rabbah stated that on the 25th day of the Hebrew month of Kislev, the Mishkan and all of its vessels were completed. The Mishkan was ready to be dedicated. The people had done all that Moshe had commanded them, and they did so with an alacrity. Now they approached Moshe, hoping to erect the Mishkan. To their chagrin, Moshe told them that God Almighty wanted them to wait before they would be allowed to erect the Mishkan and put it into service. Question is, why did they have to wait? So the first sin in history was attributed to impatience. Adam, first man, was told by God Almighty that he should not eat from the tree of knowledge, which according to Kabbalah was a grape. He was informed that he only had to wait for three hours. When the Shabbat would enter, he would then have taken, been allowed to squeeze the grape and make wine. After making Kiddush on the wine, he then would have been able, permitted, pardon him, to eat even from that tree. However, due to his impatience, he didn't wait. Prior to his sin, man was immortal. As a result of his disobedience, death was brought into the world. <clears throat> Excuse me. When the children of Israel stood at the foot of Mount Sinai, they accepted the Torah from God Almighty Himself. At that time, God Almighty in His benevolence forgave all of their sins. He even forgave the sin of Adam, which took death out of the world and make, made mankind immortal once again. However, when Moshe was late coming down from the mountain, due to their impatience, they made the golden calf. Moshe was late, and they panicked. As part of their punishment, they became mortal once again. However, in order to achieve, achieve true repentance, God, all, all, God Almighty made them wait almost three months before they were allowed to erect his house. Their sin was impatience, and now their tshuva, their repentance, was to exhibit extreme patience. Somehow this trait of impatience is still with us today. We expect everything that we do to have instant results. We live in an age where everything, everything is moving faster and faster. Even when we pray to God Almighty, we expect Him to answer our prayers immediately and, of course, in the affirmative. No is not an option. As we look back on our lives, we can observe the long hand of time and how miraculously somehow all the pieces fit. You know, a full-term pregnancy is nine months, regardless of your impatience. Young babies expect all of their needs to be addressed now. Part of our job as parents is to teach our children the necessity of patience. Rabbi Yitzhak Eliezer stated that the dedication of the Mishkan occurred on the first day of the Hebrew month of Nisan. On that day, Aaron, the high priest, offered up all the sacrifices and he arranged them on the copper altar. He prepared the golden table with the twelve showbreads and he lit the menorah. Everything, everything was ready for God to enter his house. But still, the Shekhinah did not descend. It was only when Aaron offered the incense on the golden altar that the divinity of God entered into his house. 
The Torah Shlema stated that the golden altar, though it was much smaller, was much more expensive than the copper altar. This is an allusion to the fact that the soul of man is more important than is his body. The copper altar, which consumed the meat of the sacrifices, is connected to the body of man, who also eats meat. The golden altar's purpose was only to burn the incense. This alludes to the soul of man, who receives pleasure from his sense of smell, which is connected with the incense. This is also why, as part of our Havdalah prayer that we recite on Saturday night, after the Shabbat ends, we smell spices. It is a sort of smelling salts to revive our, revive our bodies after the loss of our neshama yaseira, our additional soul. This is the extra soul that enters our bodies as the Shabbat begins and then leaves as the Shabbat comes to an end. Therefore, the Torah refers to the sacrifices as a reach nichoach l'ashem, a sweet-smelling savor to God. The last of the two furnishings in the Mishkan were placed in the Azura, the courtyard. They were the Mizbeach on the Choshet, the copper altar, and the Kior, the wash basin. The Kliyakar asks, why was there a need for two altars? He answers that the copper altar was, was the place where animals were offered as a sacrifice to God. This was perceived as an atonement for the body of man, since animals resemble mankind in, in many ways. In addition to the burning of the incense, the golden altar was also used for the sprinkling of the blood. These two rituals complemented each other. The Torah in the portion of Achare Mot states that nefesh habasar bedam, that the life force of the flesh resides in the blood. When the incense was offered on the golden altar, the smoke from the incense would ascend up to heaven. So the smoke served as a sort of vehicle to transport the soul up to the heavenly throne in order to attain its atonement. You know, I think this will end our tour for today. And next week, we will hopefully continue with the curtains that covered the Mishkan. I hope that all this information is giving you a deeper appreciation of the symbolism found in connected to the Mishkan and its vessels. You know, let us end with a prayer that God Almighty should bring a quick, de decisive, and victorious end to the war in Gaza, with the safe return of all the hostages and the speedy recovery of all those who were injured. May it comfort the mourners and protect all the brave IDF soldiers and all the civilians all over the world that are in harm's way. With the coming of Rashiach Tsukano quickly and in our time. Again, let me thank you for attending. Um, may God bless you and yours with all that's good. Stay happy, stay healthy, stay safe. Uh, please, again, subscribe if you haven't, and push like, and uh, share with your friends. And again, there are only about 350 lectures on my thought. If there's any topic that you wanted to see, mourning and pain, uh, happiness, success, wisdom, all types of ideas, uh, just put in Marty Goodman and the topic. You may be surprised at what you come up with. Again, all I, surprise, all I supply is the perspiration. It's God that supplies the inspiration. God bless you and be well. And again, thank you once again for listening. There will be a musical rendition right after this. Please stay tuned. God bless and be well.